Have you ever heard that New York City claims to be the financial capital of the world? It claims to be the fashion capital of the world too. But London, England, also says it owns those titles, and most any French citizen will tell you that Paris is the real fashion capital of the world. Big cities often make such boasts. The news media also plays a part in establishing unofficial capitals of the world. But smaller and less famous cities also dispute capital of the world titles. Today, we tell you about a few of these quirky capitals of the world that you can find in the United States. Cimarron, New Mexico, is a village about two hours from Santa Fe, the state capital. Cimarron claims to be the cowboy capital of the world. The town got that nickname because some of the Old West's most famous cowboys once lived there, including Buffalo Bill Cody. But other cities take issue with Cimarron's claims. Oakdale, California, for example. Is sure that it is the cowboy capital of the world. It even has a cowboy museum and holds a big rodeo every year. Not surprisingly, the state of Texas claims a cowboy capital of the world too. That would be the town of Bandera in the rugged Texas hill country. With its rodeos and many dude ranches, visitors can easily feel the proud cowboy culture in Bandera, Texas. Speaking of Texas, the state claims two of America's seven, yes, seven watermelon capitals of the world. The towns of Weatherford and Naples battle for the title. Towns in five other states, Georgia, Illinois, Utah, Arkansas, and Oklahoma, are also in the fight for the watermelon title. Many of the towns have festivals to celebrate the juicy fruit. Some of the towns also have large statues in honor of the watermelon. Ken Smith is an editor at Roadside America. The website features off-the-beaten-path tourist attractions across the United States. He told VOA that many small cities fight for a capital of the world title. To increase tourism, most capitals of the world are usually smaller towns. They're not big cities. Big cities do not need to call attention to themselves that way, whereas a small town does. Mr. Smith said, "A town wants people to come. They want visitors. Tourists buy gas, eat, buy souvenirs. They help the local economy." Sometimes a capital of the world fight can get dirty. The long-standing feud between the Kansas towns of Burlington and Chautauqua is a good example. Both towns desperately wanted the title of catfish capital of the world. To settle the debate, the two towns held a competition to catch the biggest catfish. The winning town was to receive a trophy. Burlington won, but. The mayor of Chautauqua did not accept the results. Chautauqua stole the trophy from Burlington. Burlington stole it back. The thieving went on for years. Finally, the trophy ended up in Burlington. Chautauqua settled on the title of catfish capital of Kansas, and Burlington now rules as the state's only catfish capital of the world. Not every quirky capital of the world title is disputed. Sometimes titles apparently are not as desirable as others. For example, Knoxville, Tennessee, as far as we know, is the only underwear capital of the world. The title is an old nickname for the city, which used to have a big textile industry. Then there's Scottsboro, Alabama. The lost luggage capital of the world, the city is home to the unclaimed baggage center, where airline luggage goes if it gets lost. And Anthony, New Mexico, is the only leap year capital of the world. 
Every four years, the small town holds a big birthday party for people born on Leap Day, February 29th. You can bet the city is already preparing for February 29th, 2016. I'm Jonathan Evans with Ashley Thompson.